Okay, so welcome back, my friend. We got a lot to talk about, so let's dive right into it. Tell me, please, what the fuck happened to your old party? I mean, they're now using the Francis Scott Keybridge accident as an excuse, an excuse to denigrate immigrants and stoke conspiracy theories. I mean, what about that incident has set them off? Hey, Michael, uh, always good to be with you, brother. Um, and thank you for everything you do, Michael Cohen. Look, you, we've talked about it before, man. Uh, Trump's the leader of the party. The, my former party is now fully radicalized. You and I fight about this, but I distinguish between Trump and Jim Jordan and all the Republican elected officials and Hannity and all of those voices. I distinguish between them and the voters, the MAGA voters out there. I, I, I will not demean them, but you're right, Michael. These people feed the media and politicians, feed Trump supporters bullshit, ugliness, cruelty, and bigotry every day. They, they just keep doing it. They, and and it's, it's really scary. I mean, there's an accident. So, like even the bridge, right. like I mean, even there's, just there's a an, bridge. There's an accident. It happened. It's it's messed up, and it's causing all sorts of problems in terms of transportation. I get that. I get that. And this is going to be a long ass process to remove the you know the bridge uh, that's fallen into the water. But how do you then attach it to an immigrant issue? And the conspiracy theories are flying. It's like one asshole after another comes up with another conspiracy theory. It's the Democrats. It's Joe Biden. It's immigrants. It's you name it. It sells, Michael. The bullshit sells. The cruelty sells. The anti-immigrant bigotry sells. The conspiracies sell. Most Republican voters, Michael, are scared. They've been angry and confused. And so demagogues come along like your former boss, Trump, and just take advantage of how frightened and angry these people are and feed them bullshit. And that's what Trump's been doing for eight years. And everybody else, Michael, all my other former Republicans, they've learned from Trump. Trump hasn't paid a price for this. Hell, he's still the fucking Republican Party nominee for president again. So Jim Jordan and all my old buddies, they all now try to imitate Trump and do the same thing he's doing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you heard this, but the other day, Trump has now started something which is called the Trump National Committee. And there is no doubt in my mind that he intends to rebrand the entire RNC as TNC. I mean, literally, there will not be a Republican Party going it's, forward if Trump has his way. He wants to rebrand it into his own party. And Michael, that's why when people say after 24, like I still get Republicans who call me privately and say, Joe, after 24, Trump's gone and we can go back to what we were. And I say, bullshit, you, because uh, this is Trump's party. And even if he loses it this year, Michael, he still owns the party. The apparatus of the party is his and the base is his. So, yeah, yeah, he's turned the party into one of his businesses, one of his family businesses. Well, you got to hope then that it's not another one of the family's failed businesses, right? I mean, you certainly don't want one of our two political parties in this country to be anything remotely like Trump steaks, Trump vodka, Trump mortgage, wow. uh, Trump Baja Mexico, California, Trump Soho, uh, Trump ice, Trump, you know, Trump, 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 Trump. I mean, how many more Trump University? How many more do we actually need to show that it is failing, including this truth unsocial or yeah. this untruth social, however you want to describe it. I mean, that's just another Ponzi scheme that's waiting to happen. We'll get into that afterwards. But I'd also just like to jump into something that you've said, something like, and I'm going to quote it. If Christians complaining about the transgender day of visibility falling on Easter actually ask Jesus what he thinks, he tell them, quit complaining. So tell me, are the Christians backing Trump? I mean, real Christians? 
And I, Michael, I say this as a Catholic kid, as a as a Christian. That that made me so sad. That whole thing, right? Uh, the fact that Transgender Day of Vis- Vi- Visibility, that's been around now for ten years, happened to fall on the same day Easter fell on, and almost all of my Christian peers, Trump supporters, got all bent out of shape. Talk about snowflakes, by the way, but got bent out of shape. Like this is something Biden did on purpose. Like Biden purposely wanted to insult Christians. Joe Biden's Christian. Um, again, the, 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 the roadmap here is you do well on the right, because I used to do this, if you can generate bullshit outrage. And it's an outrage machine. Um, and it makes me sad, Michael. I know you disagree with me, but I think most of these people, the supporters are still good people and they've been fucked and they've been led astray and they've been lied to. And, and it's, it's really sad. So they buy shit like this and they get angry about it. Okay. So they're good people. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay on that. They're good people (laughs) that they are good, solid Christian people. And they've been buying into all of Trump's bullshit now, literally since 2016. But since 2016, eight years going on now. You've been lied to as a party for eight years. During the four years of the administration, more than 35,000 lies told to his people, including, including COVID which cost a million American yeah. lives. Yeah. Okay? You've been lied to about 35,000 different, I don't know how many they translate, just 35,000 lies is what I've read. That, And then after that, you know, the fact checkers just got too tired of yeah. trying to count the lies. So at what point in time do these lies become just too much? for these good, solid Christian Republicans that you are referring to. What do you need to do? Smack them upside the head with a bat in order to wake them the fuck up and say, okay, listen, I get it. You're a Republican. I get it. And I only want to vote party line. There are some very good Republicans out there. Very good Republicans that are out there. Donald is not one of them. And yet they go back to the Mandarin Mussolini, the narcissistic sociopath, for what? For comfort? So, Michael. For love, right? Because isn't that what the Bible's all about? Is love, right? And peace and honor. So, how is it, how is it attacking transgenders? Because the day falls out on Easter. How is that biblical? How does that make you a good Christian? I'm just lost. It's, uh, Michael, it's about revenge. And and it's not about love. And you're right. It should be about love. Because if Jesus were alive and and if Jesus were on this planet right now, if he'd have been here on Easter a couple days ago, Jesus would have told all of us Christians, love all my brothers and sisters, gay, straight, transgender, love them. Now, a lot of Christians, uh, and I understand this, I disagree, they have a problem with the whole issue of transgenderism. I respect that view, even though I disagree with it. Me too. But to to be cruel, to even if you you think, like many of them, Michael, tell me transgenderism is like a virus, it's like a mental disease. I completely disagree with that. But even if you feel that way, you still love the transgender man or woman. You still love that person. Jesus always said, you know, love love the sinner, abhor the sin, love the sinner. Um, but they have a hard time even doing that. Um, it's, it's just, look, they look at Trump and you know what, Michael, a lot of them have told me over the years when I've said what a fucking bad guy Donald Trump is to them, they will tell me, Joe, read the Bible. Throughout the Bible, God often, you've heard this, picked flawed, bad people to do his works. A lot of them, Michael, believe that as well. Well, they certainly picked the right guy. There's no doubt about that one. Uh, I mean, you (laughs) certainly got somebody who is fundamentally flawed, you know, as a human being, 
as, you know, as just, um, you know, look, you got your seven deadly sins, right? You have pride, yeah. right? Greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth, right? Those are your seven heavenly virtues. Donald fits all of them. And yet, for whatever the reason may be, right, these folks are following him right down into the rabbit hole of his cult. In fact, I believe if Jesus was walking the planet today, Donald would walk over to him and say, Dad loves me more. Quite frankly, he doesn't even like you. And there's something wrong with you. And he would attack him. Your hair is too long. Your, your, your feet are dirty, right? You know, your, your nails are dirty. That's what he would do. He, he would find fault in Jesus as well. He's the, Michael, Trump is the antithesis of what Jesus and the Bible tell us to be. Donald Trump is, and even, look, even almost all of his supporters know what I'm about to say. None of his supporters, most of his supporters would not raise their kids to be like Donald Trump. <laughs> and and they and Michael, they know that. And many of them privately tell me that. And then right away they say, but I, I'm not asking him to be my kid. I'm asking him to do this. What, and Most of what? his support. Which is what? Which is him Michael. To do what? This, to fucking punch their enemies punch the deep state punch cnn punch the socialist punch msnbc punch fake news and on and on as punch long the as transgender as long as he attacks what they believe are the enemy they ignore his sins this is what they tell me every single day now i disagree with that michael i i do um, but I, 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 again, I think most of them are really far down the rabbit hole and it's hard, you know, Michael, it's hard to, for someone who's been fooled to admit they've been fooled. I'm not talking about you, but history I, teaches I us it. this. I no, 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 no. You were I not fooled. fooled. You were a biz, you were a business partner of his. That's a different deal. Um, but, but it's hard, it's harder, it's easier to embrace a liar than to admit you were fooled by a liar. Michael, you talk about the, the sins. You, you mentioned seven or eight minutes ago how dishonest Trump is. I'm a former politician. All politicians lie. We've never had somebody like Trump. He lies, his every, lies every time he opens his mouth. When you lie to some, you don't respect or like people that you lie to all the time. Trump doesn't like or respect his followers. It's because he lies to them all the time. Many of them don't think he lies, which is sad. The others excuse it because, again, Michael, he's going after the enemy. Yeah, interesting. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that his supporters, that these folks actually believe that the Bible salesman is Jesus? I've seen that now, and he's running with this. You know, as the consummate salesman that he is, the branding marketing guy that he is, there are dozens, dozens of AI generated photos of Donald Trump with Jesus standing behind him, laying hands on him. And people are now saying that Donald Trump, I can't believe that that we're even having this conversation. It is that insane that Donald is the second coming of Jesus. Hey, Michael, I, uh, right. I come from MAGA. I voted for him in 16. I'm a reform MAGA gangbanger, but because I come from MAGA, I still engage with these folks every single day. Many of them have told me that what you just said, that he's the second coming. Here's what's going on, man. These people want an authoritarian. 
They, they want kind of a certain America back. They don't believe democracy can get them that America back. So they want a dictator to get them back. You marry a dictator with these are folks who are generally Christian. It's not a big leap then to turn the dictator into the Messiah. And it's scary and sad, but that's where, that's kind of where many of them are. No, well, I guess we're going to have to relive out the Bible right? Despite the fact that John Paul II acknowledged that it was not the Jews who killed Jesus, but, you know, by nailing him to the cross, um, if Donald is the second coming of Jesus, maybe this Jew, which I am, right, may have to nail his ass to the cross, which we intend to do in the upcoming trial. You know, at least, let, yeah, let, let me be fair about that, right? You know, it's his jury trial. It's being um, you know, it starts April 15th. Uh, you have the Honorable, um, you know, Judge Mershon, uh, Juan Mershon presiding over this. A consummate professional. You have significant prosecutors uh, that are going to be handling this. And Trump actually has, you know, two semi-decent lawyers as well. Why they're acting the way that they are and they're doing the things that they are. You know, I know a lot of people who had known, for example, Todd Blanche in um, yeah. in the past. And many of them had, you know, really good things to say about him as an attorney. However, like the people that you're speaking to, the MAGA, they do not understand why he's making the motions that he's making, why he's doing the things that he's doing, why he's dishonoring himself, his reputation, and the profession, and the profession the way that he is. And for whatever the reason is, and I don't think it's the money aspect. I really don't. I why think is it probably, then? Why is he doing it? I, I personally think it's he has thoughts in his head about his future and the power that Donald Trump can bring to him if, in fact, uh. if he's successful, that Donald escapes the liability, et cetera, et cetera. And again, this is a jury trial. This isn't like in Goron who was, it was a bench trial. He made the decision. This is going to yeah. come down to the 12 jurors. It's going to come down to the documents and the presentation. But you know what? I am constantly being referred to as a key witness. So if, in fact, that, you know, he ultimately is held accountable, right, I will then AI generate myself nailing that motherfucker to not a cross, but to a satanic sort of uh, emblem. Hey, Michael, will he be able to delay this trial? No, no, I don't, don't think, think so. No, no. I think Judge Mershon has made it crystal clear that this case is starting on April 15th. In fact, they just they just um, denied a motion yeah. by Blanche that asked for a delay to which the judge responded. You had so much time to bring that motion, and now yeah. you bring it 17 days before trial? Denied, all right? Denied. You want to take it? They're going to keep trying. They're going to keep trying. By, by the way, mark my words on this one. Whether it's on April 14th, 15th, or even after the very first day of Wadia, when they're trying to, you know, start picking jurors to impanel, Blanche and Necklace, the two lawyers, will make another motion seeking yeah. to change venue again making yeah. the claims that they cannot get a fair trial because yep. of all of the publicity and everything else that's going on. That's, that's their game plan. Their game plan is to delay this past the point where you can't even really bring the case because it would interfere with the election, and there is yeah. that unwritten rule that you don't do that. So their goal is to try to delay this as long as possible because they know the information, they know the documentation, they know the testimony. Discovery has been um, has been you know provided to them, so they know the nature of the case, and they clearly not just 
not just does Donald fear this case, knowing that he will be potentially the first former yeah. president ever convicted in a court of law of a crime, right? He will be yeah. the first. He's petrified of it. You know, he feared the New York AG case because it's money. Yeah. This is this goes beyond fear. This is he's petrified because it involves his loss of freedom. But Michael, you 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 said something really important a minute ago. This is a jury trial, completely different beast. Or if if it go when it goes to trial, he's just got to they got to find one juror, right? One convince one juror. Yeah, and that'll just create a hung jury, and then it'll end up going again. But but that's a victory. You know, that Trump will say that's a big victory. Yes, yes, he absolutely will. However, however, hung juries are not as common as many people think. Yeah, right. And if there's one in the group. There's a lot of pressure on that one. Yeah. Right. To explain yeah. the reasons why. And then you'll have the other 11. So, what are you talking about? Because they do take notes. Right. And yeah. the, the oh, foreman, yeah. the foreman would sit there and moderate this and so on. And if, in fact, hypothetically, that it is determined that this is just somebody who managed to slip under, right? That this is somebody who had these preconceived ideas from early on, there's yeah. always the ability within which to remove that juror and replace him with an alternate. Because this jury will also have, in my belief, two alternates, two alternate Mike, jurors. Michael, I got to admit, brother, though, what, what pisses me off is this. I never wanted this to be the first trial. I never wanted this to be the main trial. Donald Trump tried to overthrow an American election. It it just fucking pisses me off that he has not been in a courtroom on trial for that yet. That's the big one. And I don't think he's going to be on trial for that before the election. Well, you're probably right about that. First of all, the January 6th case. Yeah. Is nowhere right now. Yeah, they filed the they filed the complaint and so on. Yeah. There are a thousand witnesses. There's millions of documents. That case is nowhere close to even going to a trial situation. But same with Georgia. Same with Georgia. Yep. Same same with Georgia. But the Marilardo documents case, you know, could certainly take place uh before. Uh it, it could. If the yeah. you know if the trial schedule you know dictates and there's not too many hiccups, that case can come in before uh, the November election. But I'll tell you, I was watching MSNBC this morning, and Andrew Weissman, yeah, who's a contributor, was on, and Andrew Weissman said something certainly more articulate than I, but it's the same. It's the same thing. I don't know why people have the feeling like, Joe, what you just expressed. This isn't huh. the case that I wanted to go first. Yeah. That you know, And so what you're doing is you're sort of invalidating a Fair. crime. You're invalidating a crime. Let me be very clear about something. If Joe Walsh, whether as the private citizen or as a former member of Congress, or even if you were still in Congress, committed these crimes, your ass would be Hell right yeah. now in jail. Hell yeah. Hell Plain yeah. and simple. What we're yeah. all doing is we're treating these four indictments. Hard to imagine the former president, 94 counts, four indictments, and still leading the party and destroying it. But it's hard to imagine that we are treating these four cases like this is the fucking Kentucky Derby. Yeah. You're handicapping which one is more obscene to our rule of law. And I will not disagree with you. The violent attempt to overthrow our government, the insurrection of January 6th, in my opinion, is by far the grossest 
action ever against by an our against person. our laws. Yeah. So then, you know, it's a photo finish between Georgia and the Marilardo case. It's a photo finish, right? I mean, showing and discussing and potentially even giving America's secrets, top secret information to we don't know if they're allies or adversaries. We have no idea. All we know is that he's waving these documents around, these top secret documents that put your life, my life, all of my listeners' lives, our families, this country's national security in jeopardy. And that's fucking gross for a guy who's a former and his complete yeah. understanding of the Presidential Records Act is yeah. like everything else. He has no understanding of what it actually stands for and what it means. And they're making these wild assertions about it that are just not based in law or fact. So let's all just stop handicapping these four cases. This is a crime. He will be prosecuted like anyone else despite the fact that he gets a lot more leeway than anybody else. Yeah. But he will be prosecuted. That case is starting April 15th. And again, just because it's not the grossest crime that he is alleged to have committed does not mean that it is not nevertheless a crime. Michael, uh, amen, preach. Thank you for the correction. That's a fair point, and I concede it. Uh, and I, my anger is this, and you're right. A crime is a crime period. He should be held accountable for any fucking crime he committed. This is my, this is nothing angers me more than this. He's the only president in the history of this country who lost an election and then tried to overthrow that election. The American people are going to vote in eight months. Um, Without, I believe, without any verdict on what that man did to overthrow the last election. Americans are going to vote in the next election without any resolution on what that fuckhead did in the last election. Again, you're right, but it infuriates me that we're three years and three months removed from Jan 6th. And this guy has not been held accountable for that yet. And I don't think he will before the election. And that's horrible. That's just an absolute shame. Yeah, You know what I call this, this theory, uh, which is the Manhattan DA case? I call it the Al Capone theory. They couldn't get Capone yeah. on murder, extortion, racketeering, you know, gambling, prostitution, bootlegging, whatever. So they got him on tax evasion. Crime is a crime. And if the if the you know jury comes back and makes the determination based upon the evidence that he's guilty, now he's a felon. Now he's a convicted felon. Right. Okay, but put point counterpoint and slap me upside the head if you disagree. Agreed. But if he's found guilty by a jury for this crime. And I agree, a crime is a crime, and if he committed it, he should be found guilty. But if he has a conviction for this crime, that will not hurt him in this election. I well, do not well, believe. Well, okay, now not you know, this, been, not this conviction. I, I, not I don't, this I don't know about that because you know the question was posed to a large group of Republicans. And I know a lot of them turned around and said that. You know, if he is found guilty of any of these 94 crimes, they cannot. And there's a segment. I'm not saying that it's the bulk of Republicans. I'm not no. saying that it's half of the Republicans. I'm just saying that there is a large number of Republicans that will not vote for him if, in fact, that he is found guilty. They just don't want I don't, a president it, who is a felon. Yeah, and I two things. I don't believe that. Talking to Republicans every day like I do, I don't believe most. 
I believe that's a small number who really will do that, even if they said it in a poll or focus group. And tr because it's a crime, Michael, but Trump will, even if he's found guilty of this crime, A, he's going to appeal, but he will say <laughs> bullshit on this crime. It would be a lot harder for him to say bullshit if he's found guilty for Jan 6th. Um, but he'll be able to say, bullshit, they're coming after me. This is a petty little offense. Come on, come on, come on. Well, he could say whatever he wants. All I can tell you is that if it was you, me, or any of my listeners, if it was anybody else, you would already be behind bars. Hey, can I go back to the yeah. whole transgender uh, day of visibility yeah. thing for a sec? Newt Gingrich, who oh, I have boy. had the displeasure of meeting many times, had some really horrible and ugly things to say about the transgender day of visibility. My question to you is how responsible is he for the behavior of the modern Republican Party? Uh, he's right up there, Michael, with all the other Republican leaders. And when I say Republican leaders, I mean Hannity and all the guys on Fox, all the right wing radio guys like I used to be, all of the Republican politicians, all the former Republican politicians who have a name like Newt, they all sit up here and they all feed this fear mongering bullshit to their voters and their supporters. So yeah, Newt pedal. And Michael, think about this. Newt's 80 fucking years old. He's a Catholic, a practicing Catholic. He, he's not long for this world. He doesn't have another 40 years. He's going to meet his maker one day soon. He has no reason to peddle this bullshit. He has no reason to suck Trump, right? To, to, to bow and worship Donald Trump. He's not running for office again. But the fact that even he feels he's got to bow to the cult leader is just so gross and so pathetic. So yeah, he's completely responsible for this. Look, I remember when Trump ultimately came out and endorsed Mitt Romney years ago for the presidency, and Newt was there with us at the time. I can tell you, overhearing, Newt could not understand why Donald was endorsing Mitt. He thought that Donald was almost like a plague, right, to Mitt. And in many, in many cases, he attributed to Mitt's loss because of the Donald Trump endorsement. So it is kind yeah. of it is kind of comical to see him right now there, you know, kissing the other guy's fat ass. But I, you know, let me ask you this question then: Is there any is there any such thing anymore as a moderate Republican? I um, mean, we saw we yeah. saw moderate Republicans like the Adam Kinzingers of the world. Or, in some respect, Liz Cheney, right? Who who are the moderate Republicans now, and do they even exist? Well, it's it, you know what, Michael, it's 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 a whole different deal now. Like before Trump, as I as a Republican, you were moderate or conservative, depending on where you were on the issues. That's out the window right now. You are either now you're it it's determined who you are by where you are on trump yeah. so if if you are yeah. so forget about the issues there's no longer like a moderate conservative spectrum it's how often do you kiss donald trump uh that's the spectrum now and if you don't support donald Tr i can't say this enough man if you're a republican and you publicly oppose trump you are no longer a Republican. I came if out. If you years. supported Nikki Haley, Trump himself had told you, fuck off. I don't want you. You're not welcome in the MAGA world. You, 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 you lose your future as a Republican. When I came out and publicly opposed Trump five years ago, when I did that, I knew I was ending my career as a Republican. Liz Cheney and Adam knew after Jan 6, when they publicly opposed him, they were done as Republicans. So it's not moderate and conservative anymore. It's, 
I love and want to marry Donald Trump or I really like Donald Trump. You have to be somewhere between those two to remain a Republican. It's got nothing to do with issues anymore. Yeah. I mean, look, we saw, for example, um, Senator Langford, right, who yeah. had actually created possibly the most comprehensive immigration bill yeah. that has been put forth at least in the last three decades. It's probably five decades, but at least the last three. Because every president, every president has kicked that fucking can down the road because it's that difficult. It's a hot button topic, you know, It's on, and it's difficult to effectuate. You know, it's difficult financially. It's difficult uh, in terms of strategically. And it's also, in many cases, you know, you get you get individuals who oppose any sort of immigration because yeah. they feel that America being the melting pot that we're supposed to welcome everybody and blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously, I believe in borders. I believe in immigration laws. I believe we have a broken system, and I think Amen. it needs to be fixed, plain and simple. Look at what they did to him, simply because during the State of the Union, when the Republicans were booing Biden on it, and he said, what are you talking about? It was one of yours that put that document before me, which I wanted to sign, but because Donald Trump told them not to, and MAGA Mike Johnson wouldn't introduce the bill, it doesn't exist. And, and, and Michael, that's a perfect example. James Langford, he and I got elected together. He's a hardcore conservative. Hardcore. Before Trump, he was as conservative as I am. Hardcore, hardcore conservative, uh, like Liz Cheney. Um, and yet he tries to find a compromise on this issue and boom, he slapped down. And now uh, so much of the MAGA base is opposed to him. It's bad. It's wrong. But at one point, Michael, that's important. Look, this is a bad issue for Democrats. And Joe Biden has not paid attention to the border for three years. I'm glad he's paying attention now, but it's it's late. It's too late. And yeah, Republicans the last few months are playing politics and they won't take up this bill. They don't want to help Biden. But man, Biden created this thing and he's made a mess of things. And it's li like abortion is a bad issue politically for Republicans. The border and immigration, Michael, are bad issues for Democrats. Yeah, I just right don't now. think that Biden created the issue. That issue oh. of immigration has been around literally. You know, let me put it to you this way the tunnels that they have that lead from uh, underneath the southern border, that wasn't built in three years. Those tunnels, those tunnels are decades old. All right. And that's why I say this immigration. And Donald Trump's horse shit about, you know, that. For example, uh, all of the fentanyl is coming from yeah. Mexico through Bullshit. these immigrants and so on. Get the fuck out of here. Not 90% of it's coming from airplanes. I mean, exactly. you know, oh, we'll stop the fentanyl and the fentanyl deaths, which we need to. But it's not that it's being shoved up the asses no. of immigrants who are acting as mules. All right. This shit's coming in in a thousand different ways. But I want to ask you something. You know, I want to move on to like truth social. All right. Because <laughs> on that untruth social, Trump posted a video that includes an image of President Biden kidnapped yeah. and bound with rope in the back of a pickup truck. So think about think about that for a second. And then I want you to think about what happened to my friend Kathy Griffin when she posted Trump's fake severed head. And tell me, tell me how it's okay for Trump to post that, but Kathy Griffin got beaten down. I mean, really beaten down. Culture canceled, you know, uh, country canceled. I mean, they attacked her vociferously. I went, Michael, I was on TV all last weekend and I went crazy about what Trump did. And again, everybody listening to us really needs to understand what Trump did. He shared an image 
of the current president of the United States being kidnapped and likely assassinated. I mean, let's cut through the bullshit. He shared an image of Joe Biden being kidnapped and probably assassinated. You know this because you worked with him. Trump's magic is he says and does a thousand ugly, cruel, dishonest, offensive, bad things every day. So we become numb to all the shit he throws against the wall and we move on. So when he did what he did with that image, a lot of people are so numb to Trump, they, they don't think about what he did and they just turn away and look away. We can't do that. He shared an image of Joe Biden being kidnapped and probably assassinated. Stop there. Be outraged about that. By the way, I'm glad the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, fucking pushed back hard. Don't roll your eyes and just say that's another bad thing Trump did. No, this was way worse. Yeah, I'm glad you, know, you brought it up. Look, let me be very clear about this. If anybody else did this, you'd already have had multiple yeah. knocks on the door by FBI and Secret Service. And chances are your life would be upside down, inside out and backwards right now. But you're right. He gets these fucking passes again and again and again because he does a thousand so much ugly, heinous, yeah. you know, every day. Uh, repulsive things every single day. And you're right. It's almost. Numb. And Michael, again, you know him. I don't. It's almost like it's always been a strategy of his. Every day, throw a hundred horrible things against the wall and people will just shake their head and say, I, I think it's now one important point, Michael. Uh, I, I'm, I, I believe in freedom, free country. What Kathy Griffin did, what your friend Kathy did, she had a right to do. She's a comedian, free country. I thought it was wrong, and I Me called too. her out at the time. But, but really important point that you've made. Kathy was not a government official. Nope. She is not a candidate for president. Nope. She was a freaking comedian. And so Trump doing that is way worse. Well, is it any different than um, who was the comedian again? Why am I blanking on his name? Cool. Who ended up getting canceled? He ended up resigning because he took a photo. The, the comedian from Saturday Night Live. Um, why, why oh, am I, Minnesota. Why, what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Al why Franken. I, Al Franken. Al Franken. Right. And I have so much respect for Al Franken. Yeah. He did. He he resigned because of the outrage over him as a comedian with his face. You know, next to a sleeping um, yeah. a woman's, you know, um, ass, right? And so on. You got guys right now on the Republican side that are transporting girls over state lines, underage girls. And nothing, and nothing. You don't see them resigning. You see all of these horrible acts that are going on, things that are being said. And, and I don't know. I, I, there's, just, there's just a a stark contrast between kind of like what's acceptable to do to a Democrat is not acceptable to a Republican. And I think a lot of that has to do with Trump, that they somehow fall under his um umbrella of disgust. Well, and, and, and Michael, they've learned from Trump. Like, you know how when you run for office, you do oppo research and your opponent does opposition research on you and tries to dig up all the bad shit you've said and done. I've been a candidate. It's an ugly business. Um, what, because Trump's so bad and horrible, nothing's unacceptable anymore. There's no need to do opposition research because Trump's gotten away with everything. When I ran for Congress the first time, Michael, 12 years ago, I had shitty credit and I foreclosed on a condo because I wasn't making a lot of money. 12 years ago, that was a huge scandal, foreclosing on a condominium. None of that stuff matters anymore because, and, and Republicans privately tell me this, look what Trump's gotten away with. I can do and say anything now. Who cares? Yeah, you don't need to do opposition research. You just make None. it up. You make it up and you and you run with it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we heard that you know Joe Walsh, uh, yeah. you know, uh, had sex with a billy goat, 
right? While he was in the middle of the Sahara Desert, you know, in the year 1712. And for whatever the fucking reason is, people go with it. And they run with this story. And then the story gets regurgitated over and over and over again. And as Donald likes to call it, it's the Stalin method, right? The, the lie repeated again and again and again becomes the truth. So, Michael, that's, that's the other thing Republicans have learned from Trump that was different in my time before Trump. You know, Trump has no shame. So he does something bad. He's caught lying. He's caught cheating on his wife. He's caught whatever. Trump doesn't care. He's got no shame. Um, but what Trump does is he just fucking punches back. He lies and lies. And, when he's caught with his hands in the cookie jar, he lies and lies and lies and attacks. Republicans before Trump used to have some shame. If a Republican a congressman got caught cheating on his wife or caught doing something bad, he would have enough shame that he'd resign, he'd apologize. They've learned from Trump, mm -hmm. Michael. Now they do what he does. Fuck it. No, I didn't do that. They lie, they lie, they lie, they attack the messenger now. Yeah, it's true. So let me ask you this then. In your opinion, is the sham impeachment of Joe Biden over? Or are Comer Pyle and Jim Bag Jordan going to continue humiliating themselves day in and day out at the expense of the American taxpayer. It's over. It's I'll do I'll I'll say it like Michael Cohen would say it. It's over. Nice. Hey Joe, it's over. Um but and there was nothing there to begin with Michael, but Comer, Jordan and all the rest of them, they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. They convinced most Republicans that Biden did bad stuff, and now they believe Biden's going to get away with it, unlike poor Donald. Republic Comer achieved that. Republicans achieved that. Yeah. Well, let me move on to something different then, because President Biden says that he's outraged about the strike on aid workers in Gaza. But he's been unclear about where the administration now stands. How would you like the Biden administration to deal with this war in Gaza? Because they, you know, you, you hear from all of these fucking pundits, and I totally disagree with it. Oh, uh, Muslim Americans are now leaving the Biden camp, and they are, you know, succeeding to the Trump campaign, to the Trump camp. And I try to remind people <clears throat> that the very first bill that Trump tried to have introduced in 2017 was a Muslim ban, not an immigration ban. It was a Muslim ban. He wants to throw you all out, whether you're American born or immigrated to this country. He don't want Muslims in this country. He has a hatred for Islam. <clears throat> all right. Yet they're willing to allow. And by the way, the United States is not Israel. Israel needs to handle this. Of course, America needs to be involved tangentially. But I'm just curious what you think that the Biden administration should be doing right now to deal with this war. So, Michael, I'm going to tell you what I think. But before I tell you what I think, and I know you know this about me, I'm going to tell you what I think about Israel. I am off the charts pro-Israel. Amen. When I was in Congress, I had the most pro-Israel voting record in Congress. Um, you're right that Muslim Americans will not and may not vote for Biden. They're not going to vote for Trump. They just will sit that race out. But I'll tell you what, Michael, right now I've heard from plenty of Jewish American voters who would not have ever voted for Donald Trump who are now telling me they will vote for Donald Trump. Forget about Trump on Israel, but because they're so disappointed with Biden on Israel. What should Biden do? Biden should be talking right now like he was talking a day or two after October 7th. There should be no fucking daylight between Joe Biden and Israel. Israel is our closest ally. Joe Biden continues because he's afraid politically. He continues to create daylight between him and Israel. Michael, if Joe Biden continues to do this, 
he's going to lose to Trump. Uh, there are more Jewish American voters in this country than Muslim American voters in key battleground states. What Biden should do, and he should have done this three months ago, he should have gotten in front of his left flank, young people, progressives, and Muslims who don't like his stance on Israel. He should have sat down with them, listened to them respectfully, and told them honestly where he stood that he is pro-Israel, baby. Israel was attacked. I ain't leaving Israel's side. But he didn't do that. And now he's trying to have it both ways, and it's hurting him politically. I'm yeah. done. Yep. Yeah. Look, I, I agree with you. I would have to say, though, that the, that the, Jews, uh, that the Jews who are pro-Trump have always been Republican, that they're not mm. Democratic Jews. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, I got to be honest with you. I don't see I don't see Trump with the success in this upcoming election under any circumstances. I think that the Roe v. Wade overturning the patting himself on his own ass, taking credit for overturning Roe v. Wade. There's more women than there are men in this country. Let's put aside Jewish, Muslim, Christian. Doesn't make a difference. I can't see women, especially the young voters, the Gen Zers, voting for Donald Trump, who now is fucking with IVF, mefeprestone. They're basically trying to create an alternate United States, one that looks exactly like Gilead, right? This is a, they want to make a theocratic state. When you have someone like MAGA Mike Johnson turning around and saying he wants America to return to a white, Christian, nationalist country. I'm shocked that nobody turned around and said to him, please just tell me when. When was America a white, Christian, nationalist country? And it never was. And the truth is, it never should be. Everybody should have the right to pick and choose or not to choose religion. Amen. What happens Amen. to atheists? What happens to Muslims, Hindus, Jews, right? What happens under Amen. MAGA Mike's ideology? that you're gonna have the Inquisition all over again? I don't think so. You know, on that notion, I wanna ask you this then. If you were to guess, who do you think that Trump's gonna pick for his running mate and why? All right, I'll answer that, but I wanna say two quick things to you, my brother. Um, I'm not talking about Jews who voted for Trump. I'm talking about moderate Jews who voted for Biden in 20. I've had a number of them tell me they won't again, and now they're leaning to Trump. That's concerning. Um, and, and look, I, I don't think Gen Z is going to vote for Trump. My fear is they just don't vote. Final point, Michael, and you may disagree with me, as bad as Trump is, if the election were held tomorrow, electorally, I think he'd win. Remember, this election is going to be decided by like 13 people in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin. You get my point. Trump would win electorally. He'll never win the popular vote. Biden will win by another nine to 10 million people, but that's not how we get our president. Um, so, so and, and this speaks to a lot of Biden's weaknesses. You and I both want Biden to win. I'm concerned. I know you're concerned. Trump had better pick if I like, I don't care. And I don't want him to win. I think he'll pick a woman. If mm -hmm, not, I think too. he'll pick Tim Scott. I think his people are telling him he's got to pick a woman. Yeah. You know, he's got to soften that whole blow of Roe v. Yeah. Wade. It's more than just Roe v. Wade. And, you know, I don't agree that if the Tom. election was held tomorrow, that Trump, I think it's actually going to be a blowout. Is it close, I really though, right now? No. Do you think it's close no. right now? You don't? No. And I'll tell you why. When people have the conversation with you, Joe, and they say, I'm so angry at Joe Biden right now over Gaza. I'm so angry at him over, you know, whatever. At the end of the day, you're there at the vote. And the only concern I do have is apathy towards voting. And it's why Not I say on every show, yeah. right. I say on every show, you must get out and vote. You must be registered. And you got to take everybody that you know to the polls with you your friends, your families, your neighbors, your colleagues, whoever, your postman, it doesn't make a difference. I believe it's going to be a massive blue wave because when you are there and you're looking at the sheet 
and you have to fill that little dot in before you put it into the machine. You're saying this to yourself, okay, I'm, I'm disappointed with how Joe Biden is handling this one specific issue. But the guy has empathy. He truly cares about all Americans. He's trying to do the right thing as opposed to Donald, who wants to burn the fucking country down. He's a guy who takes responsibility for nothing. The guy who turns around and says that, if you're Christian, he goes, he's never apologized to God because he's never done anything wrong. This is not a guy who is sane. So I think when push comes to shove, they will voice their anger towards certain issues that Biden is failing at, but they will vote for him because, as Biden says, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. A brother from your lips to God's ears, man. I I hope you're right and I hope I'm wrong. Uh, But I think you'd agree with me, even if you believe that all of us who want to beat Donald Trump ought to ought to work our asses off the next seven or eight months like it's going to be super close um, so that we do get out to vote. And I do worry about people not coming out to vote. I've been doing a lot of speaking on college campuses the last few months. Young people, even young people who are left of center, man. Right now, they have no interest in this matchup. That could and should change. But right now, it's a big, 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 big problem. Right. What was the last school that you went and you spoke at? Uh, UPenn in Philly, downtown Philly, last week. Man, that's a, you know, my, it, daughter went, it, my, my daughter went to UPenn. Yeah, great, great, school. Yeah, great school. Great school. Oh, I love the beautiful campus. I love that yeah. part of Philly. Yes, it, it really is. So let me ask you this question. What happens if Trump gets elected? What do you think? What do you think happens? Well, I, 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 re- I really, I, I say it, Michael, because I believe it. If Donald Trump is elected, he will do everything he can to tear our democracy down and put himself in a position to run again. He'll go after his political opponents. He'll try to jail his political opponents. He'll try to shut down media he doesn't like. He'll get us the fuck out of NATO. Uh, he'll help Putin. Mm-hmm. He'll get, he'll push to give money to Putin. Um, I, 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 I could go on. He will try to himself take over the Justice Department. He'll get rid of the independent Justice Department. I could go on. I think it's even worse than that. I think it's even worse than that. That's pretty bad, but go ahead. I believe <laughs> I believe that when he said that he wants to take apart our tripartite system of government, what I agree with you that he wants to get rid of the Justice Department. Yeah. And the Justice Department will be whatever he says and whatever he says will be enforced by something else that he said he will bring in seal team six within which to go after his enemies his opponents these are all comments that you would expect not from a president of the united states of america but from kim jong-un from vladimir putin from mohammed ben salman from Viktor orban these are not the, dic- the words. The dictators, Michael, the dictators that he looks up to. Yeah. Yes. I'll go one step further. You may remember in 2018 when I said before the entire world at that House Oversight Committee hearing that my biggest fear is if Donald Trump loses the election, that there yeah. will never be a peaceful transfer of power. <clears throat> and right after I said that, I heard in the, the galley behind me, gasps as if I had said something that I didn't know to be true that would happen. And I got ribbed by mainstream media, certainly by the ultra right wingers, yeah. right? By yeah. the AO, by the um, by the OANs, by Newsmax, by Fox, you know, by by all of them. I got ribbed that I'm being hyperbolic and that it's my animus towards Donald Trump. Uh-uh bullshit. I said it because I know him better than you do. 
And yeah. I know what he's thinking. And here's my prediction, God forbid, a million times that he gets elected. If Donald Trump gets elected as president of the United States, we will never have another election ever again. He will do everything to install himself as the dictator, the monarch, the Fuhrer, the supreme leader, whatever, the king. That's what he wants to do. And that's why he talks about rewriting the Constitution. It's why he talks about stripping the, the legislature of its co-equal powers under the tripartite system. It's why he talks about stripping the judiciary of their yeah. co-equal yep. powers. to And then to confer all the power to the executive branch, to the chief executive. Um, hello? That's him. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. He wants to Agreed. be the Putin of America. He, he, Michael, I'll, I'll just summarize everything you just said. He does not, if he wins, he does not plan on only serving one term. Agree to that. Joe, yeah. my friend, my brother, thank you as always for joining. Love you, Michael Cohen. Love you, thank Michael you. Cohen. Yeah, appreciate you thank so you, much. Brother. I will definitely be having you back and I will be speaking to you really soon. Keep pushing, man. Thanks. Thank you, pal.